GPT-4 is out, and as you probably guessed, it is a more advanced system and kind of an upgraded system compared to chat GPT-3. But for web developers, I think GPT-4 has one new feature that, I mean, game-changing seems like a little dramatic, but an, an important feature to understand that it has going on. But, you know, first off, GPT-4, it is a more advanced version of chat GPT-3. And as this is here on OpenAI's page regarding GPT-4, GPT-4 can solve difficult problems with greater accuracy thanks to its broader general knowledge and problem solving abilities. And then it kind of explains how it is more creative and collaborative than ever before. It can help with writing tasks, composing songs, screenplays, or other things like that. It can take in larger inputs. So up to like 25,000 words of text. And in this example here, they show it like just a Wik Wikipedia page of Rihanna. And they asked to describe her Super Bowl performance. And it outputs just like a nice little summary. And it does that using text from this kind of Wikipedia page. So a large input of text and you could already see, and this isn't the one feature for web developers, but you can already see that when it comes to like data science and data processing, if you could just kind of give chat GPT a bunch of data and be like, Hey, could you kind of summarize this data for a user to give them some practical takeaways? Well, it could definitely do that. So you can already see how this could be used in applications that might have some unique data for a user. And I could definitely see a lot of value coming into that. And it also kind of surpasses ChatGPT in its advanced reasoning capabilities. So in this example here, it shows ChatGPT on the left and GPT-4 on the right and kind of gives it the same prompt of different individuals have different available times in their schedules. And it asks them to find a list of kind of where they have common availability. And here you can see that it gives a really nice summarized output over here of all of their different availability and the common availability. And it's just a little bit more cleaner than over here on the left with chat GPT. So you can already see GPT-4 is kind of this upgraded system. And also when looking at standardized tests, you can see that GTP, G, GPT-4 outperforms chat GPT widely on different bar exams. So the uniform bar exam, you can see chat GPT is in like the top 10th percentile to where GPT-4 is in the top 90th. And then same thing with the whatever exam this is, you could see GPT-4 with vision, which uh, alludes to the feature I'm going to mention later, is much more powerful and scores much better. And it just kind of talks about how they use different models and they leverage kind of more sophisticated models to create this. And it's supposed to be kind of have better safety and alignment. And there are several different products that are using GPT-4 already. And it's kind of built using Microsoft Azure AI supercomputers and kind of uses that infrastructure to deliver GPT-4 kind of all over the world. And then of course, it still has some limitations as social biases, hallucinations and adversarial prompts. So I'm sure you've are all already seen by now. You can kind of like say, hey, Chad GPT, will you pretend that you are this like Dan character that can do these maybe not so great things? And it kind of falls through those. So there's still, you know, some inch issues with GPT-4, but it has some different cool features. And the one feature I've been hinting at here is above here. And that is, it can now take visual input. And as you can see, it gives it this photo of, you can see eggs. And honestly, I don't cook much, clearly. I'm not sure. Is this like uh, some sort of cooking powder? Someone watching this is probably like, dude, this guy has never cooked a day in his life. And yeah, that's somewhat to true i've cooked eggs but uh yeah i couldn't even tell you what half this stuff is well milk some sort of fluid there i don't know but it can take this input and it can kind of give you suggestions on what you can make with it so french toast crepes pan pancakes and waffles i think i could probably make can pancakes uh th so this is definitely like some sort of flour but it gives you all these different different options here and with this 
I think this has important implications to web developers as talking with a, another developer who actually played around with GPT-4 a little bit, they basically were able to give GPT-4 a design for a website and be like, hey, will you write the HTML and CSS for this design? And it did it. Now, he did mention there were some errors and some things that weren't potentially that great, but still, that that makes you already imagine that, like, say this is built into something like Figma or some design software in which you create this design and then automatically it just turns it into a web page on just one single click. I, I genuinely think we're not that far away from something like that. So with taking this visual input, you can imagine how this can accelerate and augment a developer and make them much more powerful. And that's kind of been my position on GPT-4 and these different technologies in which I think there's going to be more and more tools coming out, augmenting a developer's job, making a single developer much more powerful. And, you know, potentially that reduces the demand for needing as many developers on a team. But I do think that there's probably going to be more jobs that stem from this and many new businesses and stuff like that. Um, and I know that like just a sidebar, kind of a scary time right now for developers and people working up in the startup community. So hope all of you out there are still doing all right. But I, I think it's really cool technology. And I think that this is just going to keep ex exponentially getting better. And I think it's important to stay on top of this. So thanks for tuning into this. I hope you took something away from it and I'll see you in that next one.